Welcome to China Mosaic. I'm Xu Yi. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the normalization of China-Japan diplomatic ties, which serves as a significant opportunity for the two countries to review the past and take a look into the future. In September 1972, China and Japan first signed a joint communique. Several years later, the Sino-Japanese Treaty of Peace and Friendship was signed after approval by legislative authorities. Different from how China established diplomatic relationships with other countries like the U.S., the Soviet Union, and South Korea, this two-step mode, a pivotal political decision, embodied the strategic insights and political courage of the statesmen of the older generation of the two countries. It also reflects the oriental wisdom with which the two countries seek common ground while reserving differences in pursuit of harmony and peace. The normalization of China-Japan diplomatic ties ushered in half a century of peace, friendship, and cooperation for the two countries, bringing huge benefits to both countries and their peoples, while contributing enormously to the peace, stability, and development of Asia and the world. Since negotiations commenced between China and Japan, the latter has made solemn pledges to China that there is only one China in the world, and Taiwan is an inseparable part of China. This position is captured in the four political documents and a series of important consensus between China and Japan. The Taiwan question is essential to the political foundation and fundamental trust between China and Japan. Proper handling of this question was a precondition and foundation for the normalization of the two countries' diplomatic ties and for a positive outlook on China-Japan relations. Recently, however, some forces in Japan have been touting the so-called a Taiwan emergency is a Japanese emergency rhetoric, while keeping silent on senior U.S. politicians' provocative visit to Taiwan and the challenge posed to China's sovereignty. Instead, these forces blame China's countermeasures. Such illogical and truth-denying behaviors are nothing else but to help the U.S. in blurring the one-China policy in an attempt to make the Taiwan question a strategic card to impede China's rise and rejuvenation. Japan has been following the U.S. in recent years in exchange for benefits. It is an active member in U.S.-led initiatives like the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework and Quad. These small circles are aimed at containing China and will only result in divisions, thus threatening peace and development in the region. Japan, as a member of the Asian community, should maintain its independence in foreign strategies and balance its relations with China and the U.S. Only in this way can it improve the welfare of the Chinese and Japanese people while contributing more to the region and the world. China and Japan are neighbors in East Asia, and it is not rare for neighbors to have frictions. But the key lies in how they cope with it. Countries should honor their commitments in foreign policy. The political consensus of being cooperative partners and not threats to each other should also be upheld. In Confucius Analects, there is a line, At 50, I knew the decrease of heaven. Now that China-Japan diplomatic ties have reached their 50th anniversary, the two countries should be the masters of their own future. Draw lessons from historical experience where cooperation benefits both and collision harms both, sticks to the original aspiration of diplomatic normalization, level up dialogue and other channels of communications, deepen cooperation in various fields, and jointly create another 50 years of peaceful coexistence and mutual benefit for the two countries. Thank you for watching.